Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Pack 1 pick 1, opened Temple of Epiphany, fine card but we're not gonna first pick it. Air Elemental on the other hand is very good and blue is a pretty good color to be in so don't mind uh, starting there. Anything else worth pointing out? Some okay playables, but nothing too exciting outside of Elemental. Alright, follow that up with a second pick Empyrean Eagle. Maybe try and build a nice blue-white flyer stack. Pretty strong if it comes together, and this is a pretty ideal start. So yeah, let's give it a try. Can maybe even wheel like a Protector or a Tranquil Cove. Third pick... Well, I mean, Meter Golem doesn't fly, but it's still a very good card. So I'll happily take that. Over Isolation, over Raptor, not a fan of the One-Toughness Flyers in the sets. Outside of maybe Cloud Can Seer because of all the bows. Unsummon's pretty good too. Inspiring Captain, serviceable. Chaplain if we need a 2-drop. But I like Unsummon's interaction here. There's our first bow that we could consider in case we get a Weaponsmith. Anticipate to find our bombs. Captain's okay for boosting up a bunch of flyers and attacking for a lot of damage. Diamond Knight can also be serviceable if we're skewed towards one color more than the other. Moats can be an okay blocker if we need a blocker, but overall I don't rate it super highly since decks like the one we are building with a ton of flyers are definitely commonplace and then the mode doesn't do anything. Uh, Marauder Sack's also pretty good uh, alongside a bunch of flying creatures, so there's a, a lot of options. Probably not taking the bow before I find a Weaponsmith, since bow by itself is eh, just okay. So that leaves probably the axe as the next best card over Captain. I'll take an axe. Now I could take a Chaplain, which also plays well with Marauder's Axe. Could take a Raptor, but again, not the most exciting card. Bone to Ashes, medium. I'll take a Chaplain. And Colossus Hammer without Weaponsmith is pretty difficult to equip. Also removes Flying, so not the best combo in our deck. Inspire Charge could be a way for us to close out the game, but I just picked up an Axe, which kind of fills the same role. Prismite is mediocre at best, so I think I'll take an Anticipate. Also want to keep an eye out on just the other cards in the pack in case we need to pivot into a different color, but haven't seen a major reason to switch yet. This pack is pretty bad, just no good cards in it. Don't think it matters. Probably not going to play whatever we take there. Alright, so this is our first pack. Did not wield the Tranquil Cove, did not wield the Griffin. Did wheel a Disenchant, probably not want to main deck Disenchant. So I'm probably just taking one of the black cards here in case we get pushed out of white. Just take a Cutthroat for now. Alright, Octoprophets, I like. And I guess I'll take my Raptor now. Over Aegis or Crag. Crag could potentially let me splash a bit of red in my blue-white deck. But unless we open Kaikar... I don't see a major reason to splash. Alright, wheel the captain, that's good. So blue-white seems relatively open, so don't really see a reason to switch yet. First pack went alright. The first uh, three picks were exciting, Air Elemental, Eagle, Meter Golem. The follow-up uh, picks were not too interesting, but some playable cards here on Summon, Chaplain with Axe. Alright, what did we open? Our rare is pretty bad. Griffin Protector would be a good addition. Portal can have some neat synergies. Do we have any of those? It's okay with, like, Captain. It's okay with the Meter Golem if we have enough mana. But I think I prefer the Protector for now. Sometimes you'll see the Portal Wheel as well. Could also take Foot Soldier in the hopes of getting a few of them. But I think we gotta hope to wield this and just take Protector for now. I mean, sure. 
that kind of covers the top end of our deck and then just gotta work on the early parts of the curve would be great if we get a weaponsmith helping us uh, cast a golem for five mana instead of seven God's Willing is great, Fencing Ace could be okay, alongside like Marauder's Axe and other enchantments and equipment. Dawning Angel is also pretty decent in this type of deck. Race plays well with our uh, Captain and the Griffin Protector too. So there's a lot of good cards. My first instinct was God's Willing. My second instinct is Dawning Angel. There's also the Sprite, which is fine since we do need to pick up some cheap cards. But I'm pretty likely to wheel like either a Raze or a Sprite here. Sprite is very good in this deck since if we can pump it with Eagle, we can even activate it multiple times instead of just once. But I think we gotta hope to wheel the Sprite here. I think I'm leaning God's Willing. It's just so good of a tempo play. Now I can take the Angel over not much. Alright, I'll take a Raise the Alarm. Still plays well with Captain and the 4 mana... What's the name? Griffin Protector. And uh, can also just ambush an opposing creature. And... Yeah, I mean, Loyal Pegasus seems okay in this deck. Just need to make sure we have a low enough curve to let the Pegasus attack. But we'll be focusing on picking up those 2 drops, like the Metropolis Sprite. Some good options too. Pattern Matcher, do we have any duplicates? I don't think we do, but could easily pick up a few. Uh, Angelic Gift is okay if we can give our non-flying creatures flying. Sentry as a filler 3-drop could do worse. Yeah, we can, ma I guess, Meter Golem times too we can Pattern Match. Although that's a very late game play. Yeah, I mean, the Pattern Matcher is just a good card. Doesn't take much to find some more duplicates. I'll take it. Alright, eighth pick foot soldier. The next pack might have another one. I think that's worth uh, speculating over. I right, did not wheel the soldier, but uh, yeah, portal to go with meter golem, I guess. More late game. Sir so curve needs some work. We have too many four drops at the moment compared to two and threes. Uh, portal is a maybe if we want more late game with golem. But I just need to make sure I have enough early stuff to play. Could take the second Octoprophet, which also plays with a Pattern Matcher, but it's another 4 mana card. Denizen, I don't think that's going to be your primary game plan. And a 2-3-4-3 three, three is not exciting. Could take Evolving Wilds for fixing, but it's also pretty low on the list of priorities. So I'll probably still take an Octoprophet for now. Alright, so there's a second captain to go with the first one to pattern match, but I think Fencing Ace is going to be better for us. Plays well with the Axe, plays well with the Inspiring Captain, just an okay blocker on the ground to trade off for two toughness and one toughness creatures, can't attack us. Could take the second Prismite if I want some early game stuff to play, can also pattern match it. Probably going to make more sense than taking second Anticipate, since I doubt we have room for both. Alright, so last pack, what do we need? Some removal would be nice, Weaponsmith would be good even without any bows just to help us cast our artifacts. Just try and round out the 2 and 3 drops. Uh, the removal spell that kills creatures and gains life equal to the number of flying creatures we have would be good in this deck too. For obvious reasons. Not a portal, not exactly what we want. So this pack is pretty bad. Uh, Scuttle Mutts could be okay, just giving us some ramp to, for the Meter Golem. Not uh, an exciting first pick, but I don't see anything else we want here. Alright, there we go, Weaponsmith. <laughs> Meter Golem number three. I uh, don't think we can take that here, just gotta take the Weaponsmith, helps us cast Scuttle Mutt, helps us cast the axe helps us cast prismites, spatter matchers, golems. And then we can hope to wheel some bows or just get some bows late that the weaponsmith can find. 
Yeah, three golem is just gonna be too much. Well, <laughs> Eagle's pretty insane, especially with a pattern matcher in our deck. So that's a great pickup. Hoping to get those uh, two mana flyers now. And there we go. Over Angelic Gifts makes sense. Alright, so Foot Soldier, this would be number two. Probably gotta take the Aerial Assault since we're a bit low on removal. Plays well with our flying theme. Miscreants, we saw one in uh, one of the previous packs, so that could be number two. Stone Golem, also worth pointing out, plays well with the Weaponsmith. But I think we've got enough late game stuff going on that we don't need Stone Golem. So I think I'll just take the removal spell here. Alright, this is potentially Fairy Miscreant number three. So that starts becoming more appealing if we can wheel a couple of them, which we're not super likely to, but what's the alternative? A Steadfast Sentry, playable but unexciting. Stone Golem, kind of the same. If we do get a third, I'll happily play all three. I don't think we want to splash. We don't have any mana fixing. Stormkin is a card you want to play on turn two, not on turn seven. So while it would be very good if we could cast it, that's a pretty big if. I think I'll speculate on the Miscreants. Alright, Bow to go with her Weaponsmith. One off seems fine. And could get a Vial to go with her Weaponsmith too. Don't hate it. Over Raptor. Have enough four drops already. Let's see if we can wheel some of those Miscreants. So far, no luck. Alright, so I guess the Miscreant's not making the cut then. I don't think we're ever playing two stone golems, so then need to take the other one despite the pattern matcher. Alright, so we need to make some cuts. So Miscreant's out. Pegasus is probably still okay. As long as we have enough two drops. Can probably cut the Prismite. Don't think Gift will be necessary. Ray seems playable. Anticipate is cuttable. Uh, I like the equipment package to go with the Weaponsmith. Can cut the Soldier since we only got one. Convolute can go. Portal can probably go. It's okay with Meter Golem, but that's just too much late game. I like the Force, including two Prophets. And the Fives look good. One Stone Golem that we can also cast thanks to the Weaponsmith for cheap. So this is the first pass. All right, so two more cuts. I think this is a 17 lander with two Octoprophets to smooth out our draws and Weaponsmith to ramp into the Golems. Looking at kind of our interaction. Vile's definitely cuttable. Could cut the bow if we just have one of them, but it's still nice at killing one toughness creatures. We don't have any combos with the bow, like we don't have burn spells to combine with the one damage to take something out, we don't have any cutthroats. So the bow is strictly for killing one toughness creatures. And you know, not every deck has a lot of those, so the bow could be cuttable. I think we need all the two drops. I think I need scuttle much just as a bit of a ramp. The fours look decent. I like the fives and the two meter golems. So, the cards that are most cuttable, Vile, Bow, just use Weaponsmith to basically ramp into our artifacts. I think I like the Ray still. It's not amazing, but it plays well with Captain, Griffin, and our Axe. Could just cut the Captain, since it's probably the most uh, low impact of the four drops we have. Portal would have been a great sideboard card, but I don't think I want to main deck it. It's just too slow when the only major combo is Meter Golem. We have to draw the Golem first, play Portal, play Golem, be able to bounce the Golem, replay Golem, so that's like 10 mana, 2 cards before we get any value. Of course it's going to win as a late game, so that's why it's good in the grindy games. But you don't know what you're going to face in Bus of 1. If we're up against a Red Aggro deck, then Portal's just going to do nothing. Alright, so Captain gets to stay and we'll cut... Uh, Weaponsmith package, just keep Weaponsmith as a solid way to ramp into our artifacts, which, you know, is still a pretty good use for it. I think I like this. Raptors, like, serviceable since we've got a bunch of flyers that play well with it, and Weaponsmith to maybe ramp it out. 
but it's still, if we don't have an eagle, a one toughness creature that dies to bows. And we have a bunch of other stuff at four that I think is better. So don't think Raptor makes the cuts in this case. Otherwise, what we could also do is cut the captain for an anticipate to smooth out our draw. But I think we'll do fine here. We've got enough cheap stuff to spend our mana on in the early turns. And we want to make sure the Pegasus has enough uh, friends to attack alongside it. And then the mana base probably skewed towards white slightly. So 9-8 sounds reasonable. Alright, turn 2 Weaponsmith, turn 3 Stone Golem. I'm in. Cerulean Drake, that's fine. Griffin Sentinel, sure. Just uh, send a Stone Golem. Don't want him to know that we don't have a bow in the deck. It's also possible I should have just played Octoprophet into Aerial Mantle into Eagle, but the Eagle can maybe prevent some damage too. Fair enough. Should I shuffle my deck? All right. So Errol Mental can start attacking. Sprite's a good pickup too. So it's actually close whether I should play Prophet or Sprite here. Because Sprite plus Eagle represents quite a bit of damage. Prophet is a bit better at holding the ground and is more mana efficient. I think I'm still playing sprites. Alright. Let's see how much they attack with. Just a fencing ace and inquisitor. I don't think I want to jump with the weaponsmith quite yet since we do have those two meter golems in our deck. Don't really feel like trading, so I'll probably just take seven. Down to 12. I can play Octoprophets. See what's on top and that's maybe going to decide what I'm going to do in terms of attacks. Although I imagine Errol Mantle Sprite attack. Uh, let's say your opponent double blocks, I just kill the Drake. If they block with Sentinel I can pump. And I'll still have enough stuff back on defense that I shouldn't die. Don't think I want to send the Eagle, since I don't want to risk losing it to like another Assault or just my opponent blocking and then attacking back with another Captain or Inspire Charge. Probably want the extra Flyer on defense. Could potentially pump Sprite twice, but I'm not going to since we want to play a Prophet. Aerial Assault is an option, but I can kind of deal with most of their creatures here, so... It feels like it's not necessary. Yeah, I could pump the sprite once if they take the damage and then still play profits. So we'll see what they do. Opponent takes it, so I'll pump. Pegasus unsummon. I think I like the unsummon. I don't think I keep Pegasus. Like, the unsummon's gonna be good if. We need to push uh, lethal damage next turn. It can be useful at maybe saving a creature that's underneath an enchantment-based removal spell. 
It's not going to be great if they just kill my creature some other way and I need to top deck more action and I draw and summon instead. So I could also bottom it, hope to draw like a meter golem instead. But I also have aerial assault that I can double spell alongside on summon. So I feel like it's still good enough. But just barely. Alright, let's hope we're not dead. Another captain, fair enough. So just gotta survive this turn and then hopefully attack for lethal. So this would result in a trade. And then I can jump the captain. Take three. Is that better than anything else? Could also trade Octoprophet for Inquisitor since they don't have the mana to give first strike. And then jump the fencing ace. But actually killing the fencing ace might be better since it's a scarier threat long term. And then the plan is next turn to bounce the sentinel. And then attack with everyone. Opponent puts Drake in front of elemental. And I can pump once and that's 5 damage and that's lethal. So unless they have something they should be dead. If they have moment to give plus 2 plus 2 and lifelink I guess that would be bad. So what should I do if they have that one? Not block with the Empyrean Eagle. I guess that's reasonable too. Alright, I guess we'll try this. So they didn't seem to have anything. Ooh, another Cerulean Drake. Alright, means that they're not dead, but they're forced to chump. And I can assault as well to gain some more life. I guess I'll wait. And hold on to the and summon and just attack like this for now yeah given that the sentinel could just block the eagle probably doesn't make too much sense to attack with it so I could hit them down to one but I want to keep up on summon so I'll just pump once and then one assault the captain gain three and now we should be relatively safe with unsummon as insurance. So let's say they top decked an Inspire Charge, giving plus two plus one to all their creatures. Alright, doesn't seem to be the case. So they're dead if they don't have anything. So I can just take three. Alright, so we can untap, bounce that, and they're dead. Could have bounced any creature there, didn't really matter. Alright, sweet. This hands a keep in the meantime. So we're gonna try and raise the alarm, ambush the Soulmender, given the chance. I uh, could double block, I don't think there's a great reason to do so. If they want to disfigure my token, I'm very happy. And the pump spells would kill both tokens. Alright, let's curve Eagle into Scuttlemutt, or uh, Eagle into Paramatch rather. And hope they don't kill the Eagle. Could play something else first, but the curve is just too tempting. Hope they just don't have a murder here or a siphon. I think that's reasonable. Alright, no removal one time. <laughs> Definitely taking one from the Skeleton. Don't want to run into a Blade Brand or a Cutthroat.
eagle down. Maybe a uh, bone splinters. All right, fair enough. So yeah, we could have baited out the removal spell by playing something else first to make sure we get our pattern matcher value, but the curve was just too tempting. So now what? I guess just play scuttle mods. So other pairs in the deck, we've got two meter golems, which would be pretty strong if we can match those, and we've got two uh, Octoprophets, Audacious Thief. So I'll just send a Scuttle Mod, I doubt they trade, get in my two damage, and then we've got plenty of creatures on defense to block. Yeah, that's exactly true. If we played the Scuttle Mod, they probably would not have Bone Splinters. If their removal spell was like an Agonizing Siphon, you never know, they might have killed the Scuttle Mod, but still unlikely. And no attack with the Audacious Thief, that's good. I think I send both the Ace and the Scuttle Mod here. Keep Chaplain and Token back to potentially double block Thief. Don't really care if they kill them. And I could keep land in hand to play around an opposing Fen Lurker, making me exile a card from my hand. I think that's reasonable since if I top deck Mirror Golem, I can still just cast it. So. No real reason to play out the lands. We don't have uh, any card draw spells in our deck where I can, like, top deck the card draw spell and need a land plus whatever we draw and regret not playing the land out. Of course, if they mind rot me, I'll discard both, but that's not a card you see very often. Opponent got back Skeleton, did not play it. So what do we think they have? They could be hanging on to a murder. I'll start by attacking. Maybe they're waiting on a planar cleansing. We did find Octoprophet, which we can match with the pattern matcher. So if they take it, I'll be very suspicious of uh, planar cleansing. Put on the sides to trades. And murder. All right, so now I feel comfortable playing out the Octoprophet since they wouldn't have made that play if they had a planar cleansing in hand. And I guess I can tap my mana a little bit better. Although I don't think I'm playing out the land for the same reasons as last time. Can't bottom those fast enough. Although I will shuffle my deck once I play the pattern matcher, so it's only improving one draw step. And then those two lands will be shuffled back, but that's fine. Alright, Aerialist could be very scary if they can grow it. Skeleton. Ooh, Meteor Golem. We did lose a Scuttle Mod, so can't currently cast a Meteor Golem. So we actually are faced with an interesting choice. I can wait to pattern match the Golem, which is the ultimate value play, or I can just pattern match Octoprophet right now. Happy trading Octoprophet for Aerialists, so that attack is happening. Don't think anything else is getting in there. Yeah, it might pay off to be patient here. Play the land, hope we don't get mind rotted, and then Golem into Pattern Matcher for another Golem. Since we're currently lacking a bit of late game power here, we could potentially stall out and not get across the finish line. Try and get as much value as possible, and hope to draw a land next turn. One's just looping back skeleton, that's fine. And there's a land, so let's uh, shoot that aerialist out of the sky. And I think, let's see, do we attack with everyone? Probably. They could have a blade brand here, but now I got in five damage, or four damage rather. Yep, that's fine. Kind of suspected the blade brand, so given that they were likely blocking Octoprophets, we got in four free points of damage this way. 
They're at six. I can pattern match Golem. All right, that's a pretty good one. Back up to ten. Griffin's good too, but I'm just gonna pattern match before attacking, so I can make sure I can grab another Golem. And then I'm okay attacking. And what happens if I attack with everyone? They put Angel in front of Chaplain. They take six down to four. Or I can just not send the one powered creatures here, just send Ace and Meter Golem. It's probably better for now. And they might take the trade. Zero points at eight. We essentially have seven power on the board. And that's a pretty easy target for the meter golem. So we're kind of suspicious that your opponent might be sandbagging something better. But our opponent's going to fall to one, so unless it's like a giant lifelinker, we should still be fine. So... Let's go for it. And keep land in hand in case of Fun Lurker now. Yeah, if they play Safara, I get punished for this play. It might have been better to just attack with everyone, play Griffin, and then next turn play Golem. Gotta make him have it sometimes. And we didn't suspect a planar cleansing given how they played so far. But yeah, if they top decked it, that could have uh, definitely saved them as well. Alright, so far so good. Alright, on the play. Hands okay, nothing special. Pegasus is gonna kind of be a 2-1 that doesn't do anything for a while. But, um... Can still keep... Blue green and a season of growth, that's a scary card. Alright, Weaponsmith a bit late to the party, but. So, next turn I could attack for three and play a Prophet. Alright, next turn play Angel. If we draw a Meter Golem we can cast it. So opponent on Teamer can probably expect some elemental synergies. It's gonna be a Prophet first. Don't mind trading mine, even though we could draw Pattern Matcher, but I want to be able to attack with the Pegasus. Keeps both on top. Ooh, Stone Golem. So I could go Stone Golem plus Fencing Ace, maybe that's better than Dawning Angel, although that's still questionable. Since just putting more evasive creatures in play might be the way to go. So the reason to play Stone Golem over Dawning Angel is if the opponent has the 3-4 Flyer, Boreal Elemental. Then I would rather have a 4-4 attacking as opposed to a 3-2 Flyer. And our opponent's playing Elementals, they kept two cards on top, so they're likely going to make a good play next turn. So I think I'm into Stone Golem here. So we'll go Fencing Ace plus Stone Golem. So cards we want to draw at this point. Meteor Golem, pretty high up on our list. Empyrean Eagle is always decent. Uh, Marauder's Axe goes well with our Fencing Ace. Just an Amber Cat from our opponents. Keeps up two mana. I think we're attacking with everyone, and I'm playing a Dawning Angel. Could see a growth cycle on the Amber Cat to trade for a Stone Golem, essentially. Which, you know, it's not great, but gonna make him have it. Of course, our opponent doesn't know how highly they need to value our Weaponsmith, so they might think the Weaponsmith is a lot better than it actually is. And they're actually gonna grow cycle to kill Weaponsmith. So... That makes me think they probably have, like, a Risen Reef in hand they want to protect. Yep, 
Uh, we don't have the vial in our deck anymore. We cut the vial and the uh, bow. Probably could have kept land in hand since even if I top deck Mirror Golem I still can't cast it. And that hides a bit of information. And if I draw land into Mirror Golem I can still just play the land next turn. So there wasn't a great reason to play out the land last turn. So yeah, the value of having Weaponsmith in your deck is that the opponent sometimes just respects it more than they should. But you can't blame the opponent for trying to kill Weaponsmith. Ooh, wow. Cavalier of Gales. So opponents at virtually one life here. After they block Stone Golem, so any pump spell wins us the game. But uh, we'll need to end the game quickly since our opponent's definitely gonna take over next turn. Pattern Matcher doesn't have anything to match, but it's just a 3 3. Unsummon would have done 2. God's Willing, Protection from Blue and Stone Golem would have done it 2. We had a bunch of outs, but you know, we're not dead yet. Get to put the opponent to 1, add a 3 3 to the board, and hope for the best. I definitely should not shuffle since we scryed a bunch of lands to the bottom. Alright, can our opponent stabilize at one life? Facing two flyers, two ground creatures. Up to two doesn't make a huge difference, one or two life. They basically need to make two blockers, besides keeping the Amber Cat untapped, or have a blocker and a removal spell. It's not going to be easy considering they missed a lot of the early plays. Alright, Lynx is both a blocker and a removal spell in one. So that keeps him alive. So still hoping to top deck something useful here. Axe plus Dawning Angel means I can force them to trade for the Cavalier. I think I should take the opportunity to kill the Cavalier. It also messes up the scry that they set up beforehand. Because they have to block here. This is a trade and this is a chump, so they essentially lose one creature. So, gotta hope they don't have any interaction here. Shock would be bad. Unsummon, but I guess we were not beating those cards anyway. The problem with Marauder's Axe on Fencing Ace is that they get to eat my Angel for free with a Cavalier and then chump block the, cav the Fencing Ace. So I think putting Axe on Angel makes more sense. Because this way I actually kill the Cavalier and make them chum block the 3-3. Three, three. And should probably put the axe on the pattern matcher here. Alright, so opponents facing a similar situation to last time. But they have infinite cards in hand here. Opponent keeps both cards on top. If they just replay Cavalier, that's not good enough, so they need something else. Yeah, that works. Now the Pegasus can't attack alone, although that's a good draw. So still Cavalier, not an out. They need removal for Air Elemental or multiple blockers. Alright, thank you. Sweet, so we're 3 0. Alright, pretty decent opening hand. Turn 1, Pegasus. Now, do I Weaponsmith or Fencing Ace on 2? Fencing Ace makes more sense with the Pegasus on 1. Just to beat down since we're planning to attack anyway instead of use the Weaponsmith. Don't have any artifacts to ramp into, don't have Vile or Bow to search up. So we're just on the aggro plan here. Alright, they've got something, maybe raise the alarm. Maybe a two drop that they're playing here. Pacifism on Fencing Ace. So I could God's Willing Fencing Ace name white. Uh, protection does a lot of things. One of those is it removes enchantments. And then I could attack for four. That seems reasonable. I probably should have put a stop on upkeep. Eh, maybe not. If I drew a 3-drop, I maybe wanted to play the 3-drop. 
but I could have scryed one before taking my draw step. Yeah, I think I'm down. So I'll name white. And bottom the land, so that's good. And attack for four. So it just goes to show the versatility of uh, God's Willing. I'll put a stop on upkeep just to make them think we have something to search up, but we actually don't. Alright, yeah, well, flooding out a bit here. Send everyone. Well, we're on track to cast the turn 5 meter golem at least. That's fine. So no turn 5 meter golem for us, I guess, but Empyrean Eagle, great pickup. Opponent's also stuck on 3, so we need to end the game quickly since the old saying goes, uh, screw beats flood. Opponent's got all action in hand, we've got a land, so... Ooh, hello. So land is a good draw, pattern matcher to get another eagle would be a good draw too. More flying creatures. So basically, most of our draws outside of some irrelevant two drops are good draws. That's okay, we still get the passive from the eagle, so any flyer still gets plus one plus one. Like this here, Metropolis Sprite. And if we find Pattern Matcher, we can still match the Eagle and get a second one. So, Sleep Paralysis, while it does prevent us from attacking, not as bad as some other removal spell could have been. Can also pump the Sprite twice as long as Eagle's in play, so we can hit for four. So that's threatening to end the game pretty quickly. Opponent keeps both cards on top, that's bad news. Attacks. I'll take it. Now I can just kill the Octoprophet. Is it better than just pumping the Sprite twice? If I kill Octoprophet, I get to attack for 4, put them to 6. But I'm kind of scared of the opponent playing like a bigger Flyer, for example, that I might want to kill. Could also kill the Sleep Paralysis to unlock Eagle. It's also a valid play. I think I'm supposed to wait and I'm just gonna send with the Sprite for now. And kind of force them to maybe use a removal spell on sprites or play flyer that we can kill with a golem. Perfect. All according to plan. And now we can even attack with the fencing ace and pump the sprites. The golem's an ability and not a spell, so we don't have to pay the extra mana for the boreal. Attack for five. And our opponent's in a pretty precarious situation. That keeps him alive, although it's a chum blocker. This is protection from black. So yeah. They could also block fencing ace, I guess, and then chump golem. That probably makes more sense for them. But still, we're forcing a trade either way. And reducing their board when they're at 1 seems like a good idea. Alright, they'll need to find something cheap and powerful here. So like an unsummon could buy them a turn. Land into a two mana flyer. Alright, looks like we got there. Well, the sand's okay. It's not exciting, but turn to ace, turn three eagle, turn for octoprophet to look for pattern matcher, more flyers. Mm 
All right, a blue rat uh, aggro deck here. Eagle's a good blocker at least, and we've got an air elemental coming up too. All right, that's a good one. Still happy to trade fencing is for links, I think. God's willing, could also be useful, but I'm still gonna play Octo Prophets. Again, we don't have much synergy with the fencing ace, so I don't mind a trade. Opponent takes it. So land five is probably step one. Do I want to Pegasus afterwards? I don't think I do. If they kill all my flyers, then the Pegasus doesn't do anything, although I guess I'll have two of them. I can play Pegasus and Weaposmith in the same turn, but this uh, doesn't really attack all that well into the Stormkin. I think I can do better, but I'll probably keep land 5. And then, yeah, more flying creatures, meter golems, now that we have Weaposmith too. Those are all potentially good draws. Cloudkin Seer is a good one. So now I think the plan is to attack with all and have Air Elemental on defense. I guess Outrage doesn't even do it because of the Eagle, so it would have to be Land Reduce. Which, you know, would be bad, but... It's going to be a Spitfire instead. Alright, so I think just Air Elemental and Prophet Attack. Got God's Willing as protection. So Triple Block is not going to go well for the opponents. We're gonna try the triple block. All right, so who do I kill? I can kill all of them. Can kill all except one. So Stormkin makes more sense than Cloudkin. So I guess like Stormkin plus Spitfire seems okay. Since the Eagle can attack past the Cloudkin as well. I guess Cloudkin could be better for them if they have a way to like bounce it, but I didn't really expect that. And overall one toughness seems more relevant than any other synergies. Weaponsmith can also attack past the Seer. So yeah, this seems fine. And I'll name red. Do they have a negate, maybe? Or an unsummon after all? In which case, I guess naming blue makes more sense if it resolves. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much, I guess. Alright, so those both die. Play a weaponsmith, which... Mostly just a 1-3 that can maybe help me ramp out a Meteor Golem if I draw one. So I think I'll keep land in hands. Alright, they just had an Anticipate. So yeah, best draws here, Meteor Golem, second Eagle, Pattern Matcher into Eagle. Ooh. Huh, oh, that's a pretty good one. Eagle, sadly, not elemental, just a bird spirit. Did top deck the meter golem, but now we're lacking the creature to cast it. Uh, now what? Probably got to attack Chandra. They'll probably chum block. If we go face, there's a chance they take four. So I would rather force them to chump by attacking Chandra here, I think. Chandra's gonna plus. I guess there is a point to going face, because if they take it and they rely on the Cloudkin to block, I can Golem to make sure that doesn't happen. Wow. Running meter Golems, but we don't have land 7. So, if I don't attack Chandra, Chandra can kill the Air Elemental, so I should attack Chandra. And then hope to draw land next turn. Spicy. 
If I go face, then Chandra kills Elemental, which is just bad. Is just me? Plus they can also Zephyr charge to give this flying. Like our late game is here, we just gotta hope we don't die in the meantime. Alright, I mean, I guess I'll play it. Serpoint's gonna chum block. And be able to plus Chandra once again. That's kind of the best case scenario, I guess. So it'll have a Chandra at 5, I'll have 3 emblems on me. I mean, it's winnable if we draw land soon. Uncaged Fury to trade. Fair enough, at least I'm glad we played Captain, otherwise it would not have been a trade. Alright, come on lands. These emblems start adding up. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so 3 down to 8. Alright, better than I guess some of our, our other draws. So now do I just go face, put them to 5 and then next turn have lethal? So they're forced to minus Chandra. I guess never mind. If I if I go face, they can minus three now too. So I guess they still have to attack Chandra, and then they'll minus to kill Angel maybe. But then I'm getting rid of Chandra. But then these are gonna maybe kill me. I don't know. Let's uh, find out. I wonder what you're holding in hand. Is it just lands? So four emblems. Got a top deck land right now, so I can kill Chandra with a golem. All right, step one. So should I play golem before attacking in case they counter it? What do I do then? Let's say they counter meteor golem, then I could kill Chandra. Take four of my turn, go to four, and I could still technically win. So I think I should play Golem before attacking. Just to make sure. Alright, so that's gone. Attack for six. Fall to four on my turn. Hope not to get burnt out. Alright, I mean, they're dead on board. Oof. It's not every day that you beat uh, Chandra. Alright, on the play. We've got turn 2 Weaponsmith, turn 3 Scuttlemutt, which can fix your white mana to help me cast Eagle. Yeah, it's probably good enough. Could go Scuttlemutt plus Chaplain. Is it better than anything else? Yeah, I guess I can dig it. So we're in uh, a great spot here to cast uh, turn for Meteor Golem. Gonna be an Octoprophet instead. Don't necessarily want to trade Scuttlemutt for Sentry, but I might be okay trading Razy Alarm for Sentry. Smuggler. So now the Sentry can leave a counter on the Smuggler. Could also block like Chaplain plus a token and then make them trade for Chaplain essentially. Keep the two tokens. 
The tokens are not going to be super relevant, but a 1-3 lifelink also doesn't do much. Yeah, I guess that's fine. Alright, got a bit of an air force now, that's nice. So Eagle attacks. Play Prophet and Pegasus. And dig for some action. That counts. We don't have any bows in the deck. We have one in the sideboard, decided not to play it. And one vial in the sideboard that we're also not playing. But we've got a lot of artifacts. Two meter golems, a stone golem, a scuttlemutt, pattern matcher that we can all ramp out with a weaponsmith, as well as the marauder's axe. So I've got plenty of artifacts. Alright, that's a good one. Still probably attacking Pegasus plus Octoprophet here. I'm okay with any trades. Yeah, the Eagle maybe should have attacked too. Kind of a free roll. But having it on defense could pay off. Since if the opponent has a removal spell for a tapped creature, they could kill my Eagle, and now they can't. Alright, that's a good one. So, plenty of removal. So... Yeah, we're definitely behind now. I'll take four. And just a land, that's the worst try in our deck. And I guess everything can actually attack. Man, if only we had drawn an inspiring captain here. Keep land in hand for now. There's no downsides. Opponent's at 5. Yeah, that attack with the griffin was a bit ambitious, maybe. Yeah, if we were playing sideboarded games, I would definitely consider bringing in bow against executioner. But, you know, it's a bit of a gamble. Sometimes you draw the bow and not the weaponsmith, and bow is bad. Sometimes you draw weaponsmith and bow is great. And sometimes you top deck a meter golem and you win the game. So I could kill the pacifism. Is that better than killing the griffin? I didn't think so. I think this is better in case they do have some interaction other than just activating executioner, because now all the 1-1s one have good attacks. They get to chump scuttle mutt and then kill eagle. So it'll be at 3. So, yeah, we'll we'll see if they can recover here. Flame Sweep doesn't do it. Planar Cleansing would do it. Dawning Angel can maybe stabilize them. Amber Cat plus a removal spell doesn't do it. They're still taking three. All right, sweet. I think it was still fine to kill the Griffin, but it's possible that killing Pacifism was slightly better. So what would have happened then? They chump the air elemental, or they they chump like a, another two power creature and exile the air elemental. But then they still have the griffin. Yeah, not sure. Either way, we're six to zero, so that's good. All right, what about this hand? On the play, no white, and our first play would be a turn four griffin protector. If we draw the white mana, that's a mulligan for me. Alright, this is much better. 
I'll keep Sprite and Eagle, just be blue-white flyers this game. Weaponsmith could be better if we top decked one of our expensive artifacts, but the synergy between Sprite and Eagle is just too good. Ah, bottoming a land's a little greedy there, but I can understand why you would want to do it. Alright, that's fine. And no interaction for our flying creatures, and the uh, Prophet's a good blocker on the ground. It's also a great draw, so now I can stack a land on top. Is that better than just pumping Sprite twice, or once and assaulting? Probably. Ooh, Captain too. So how about land into Captain? think I'm okay trading. If they want to spend their turn giving us first strike, I'm happy. So now a rabbit bite could be a concern, but not much we can do about it. So next turn the captain could be lethal, but any interaction can slow us down. That's not it. For single green, don't think they have anything. And explosion, nice. So we got the clean sweep here, 7-0. And we even get to level up, diamond one, sweet. So next stream we can attempt to get to mythic. want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.